The rover's opportunity and spirit landed on Mars in 2004 and are still in operation today. Everywhere they go and everything they do is controlled by orders from humans on Earth. It takes hours to send information back and forth, and that can be a problem. From an airship perspective on Titan or Saturn's moons, for example, if you're flying towards a mountain and you communicate back to Earth that you are flying into the mountain and it takes one and a half hours one way to communicate this, then obviously uh, you will not be able to react in time to circumnavigate the obstacle. Therefore, the airship needs to make that decision right there and then. Dr. Wolfgang Fink and his team are creating a whole new paradigm in space exploration. To build rovers and what he calls sea rovers to act freely or autonomously and make important decisions on their own. By making smarter robots, not only could they avoid mishaps, but find interesting features on their own to investigate. It has to come down, but it, of course there's to level out at zero. Not at so what we have set out to do is, in contrast to current prevailing mission paradigms, is to mimic a field geologist on another planet. What field geologists do is they look locally at a rock, for example, get an idea of what happened in this field site, then they place the field site into a regional context, and ultimately they place the whole region into a global context. It's not about making the rover itself smarter. Dr. Fink's idea is to build a multi-tier network that would make an autonomous exploration program. An intelligent satellite would direct the blimps to check out certain areas, and the blimps in turn would send out the surface rovers. With orbiters giving a global perspective, then deploying aerial platforms such as blimps to get a more regional perspective, and the blimps themselves will help deploy or deploy agents on the ground, such as rovers, boats, lake landers, to get a very local uh, reconnaissance going. Okay, this looks good. Dr. Fink is already developing the software to make these missions happen. Okay, line up on the black line. Okay, stop. At a recent demonstration on the University of Arizona campus, he showed off his free-thinking rovers. And over there, we have the Tucson Explorer 1, which is going to be our uh, ship, yeah, uh, which yeah. will deploy on one of the lakes here. Uh, will be exactly the same way commanded as the rovers. It's the iPod instead of the human operator that is actually commanding these rovers. It uses the touchscreen capability of the iPod, and this computer, which it is, it's a computer, makes connection to the rovers and the boat, to the onboard computers of these agents, and then with the finger we can directly, intuitively move the central point into all the directions we want and therefore drive the rovers and the boats into these respective directions. Dr. Fink is also using the same system in what he calls sea rovers. The innards of the rover are basically in the boat. These sea landers could be used to explore the large lakes on Titan, one of Saturn's moons. In these methane lakes, we want to know what's beneath the lake surface. Therefore, we will be employing sensors such as a sonar system to check out the depth of the lake and structures beneath the lake surface. This is the lake surface from the sea rover's onboard camera. Again, these rovers are not being operated by remote control. What we're doing instead is a computer control of the boat. So we have one computer talking to another computer. The control unit, which we have in our hands, will ultimately be in the overhead perspective. That means on board the blimp, the balloon, or some other aerial platform, or an orbiter even, if it's low flying. And it will then, in lieu of a human operator, will uh, control the ground units by itself. Another advantage to these savvier rovers is that they can avert disaster and overcome obstacles before it's too late. Watch what this one does when it gets too close to the water. 
surface rovers can also complement human exploration by checking out high-risk areas such as canyons and craters that may harbor the science we're looking for. In the past, these places were avoided because they were just too costly and dangerous to explore. We also know that the robotic mission doesn't have the capabilities, per se, that the human explorer would have. So therefore, we are, and that's our charter in my lab, to actually educate a machine or bring a machine up to the level that it can reason or approximate the reasoning of a field geologist, determining science targets and investigating these targets. This technology using artificial intelligence could be available in 15 years. NASA and the French Space Agency are already talking about a joint mission to Titan.